So as I thought about this event and I thought about my message today, my goal is to number one, get you guys fired up for the future. So many things happened in 2020, 2021. The fact is you're still here, so you have an opportunity. You have an opportunity to change things. You have the opportunity to take things to another level. And so my first goal is just to get you in that right perspective, in that right mindset to move forward, to take advantage of the opportunities that are right in front of you, to give you some new strategies and new ways and perspectives of, of looking at your challenges in a way where you see winning opportunities. Rennie Curran was fantastic. He was absolutely amazing and awesome to hear, and we really enjoyed it. And with everything we've gone through the last few years, it's been really nice to be able to step back in, pick back up those friendships and relationships, and know that we're all going to be okay. When you think about a champion, they move differently. They think di differently. They have a different set of expectations and beliefs. They walk into a room and they believe that, man, things are going to change. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what happened last season. I don't care what the, the experts are saying, what the numbers look like. I'm going to win. And they're not just fighting for something that's just minute, something that that doesn't have substance. Champions are also championing something else or someone else. They're fighting for someone or something with the belief that they're gonna win regardless of the circumstances. And so as you move forward into this new normal, as you're trying to galvanize your team, increase that workforce, increase the funding, I challenge you to have that championship mindset because so many of us have what I call that bench warmer mindset. Anybody know anybody like that? They're just happy to have the jersey on. They're just happy to be there. They're just going through the motion, just punching the clock. Tell somebody, that ain't me. <laughs> and then some of us have that role player mindset where we're just doing just enough, doing just enough so just to get by. We're not achieving our full potential of what we know we could. We're just role players. And it may be because we've had so much success to where we don't really have to be as hungry. We don't have to really go as hard but have that championship mindset and I guarantee you that that will be the spark and it's infectious. It's infectious, it will infect everybody on your team and it will create a collective mindset where everybody is gonna change things collectively and gonna grow and there's opportunities that are gonna flow from everywhere. What a great morning hearing from Rennie, his energy, his inspirational story. Uh, I tell you, the big takeaway being the championship mindset uh, as well as winning the game before the game, which for all of us uh, association executives and leaders in our various industries, um, we always need to win the game before the game. So uh, just a terrific presentation. Looking forward to uh, checking out the book and appreciate, uh, appreciate all of those life stories that are applicable to all of us in our fields. Rennie's a fantastic speaker, and what I love about him was his energy. Positive energy, excitement on stage, he called me in advance of the session to get prepared and, and know more about our group. He knew who we were, he knew how to deliver the message. Fantastic speaker, lots of energy, great message, and really had the crowd engaged and leaving energized. And that's what we're looking for in a speaker. And I love this word, understated excellence, because it just it makes me think about my guy, Matty Beard, in the back. When, when I walked in, has he, have you guys ever been to an event where you walk in, you, you don't know the person, but they immediately capture your attention? because of their body language, because of how they move, because of how they carry themselves, because of how they articulate themselves. That's understated excellence. When I walked in, I saw Matty, I was like, oh, this guy got to do something. I was thinking like Ric Flair, like, you know, he's <laughs> just like, he, he's, he's got to bring some type of energy with that suit on. I mean, golly. <laughs> and then it doesn't even just have to be somebody who's in a leadership position. It can be somebody, I'm sure you guys have seen this, a, a, somebody who's a janitor, somebody who's a cleaning person, right, or a server, and they just do what they do with excellence. And you're like, wow, man. And they take pride in what they do. That's understated excellence where they don't have to say a word, but you know that they represent something greater, that they're doing what they do because they have pride in it, who they are. So when you have that mindset, it drives out negativity. It helps you to maintain that confidence and composure in the face of adversity. And when you're facing those high pressure situations, it allows you to be consistent. So do you represent that understated excellence? And does your team and organization represent that? Tell everybody what, what the team, what this organization just means to you. Steadfastness, consistency, stability. Um, and I think just setting the bar for just what we do in the industry. Wendy is such a stabilizing force. And all these folks are peers and friends and colleagues. Love it. And last yeah. question, why do you do what you do? Oh, goodness, why do I do what I do? The honest answer is about 30 years ago, I wanted to travel. 
Mm. And I didn't have the budget. And so wow. I read a book called Flying High and Travel, and there were like a million careers you could get mm. in the industry. And so I was scrappy, and I started out as a salesperson for a travel agency. And 30 years later, I've been blessed to see a lot of the world and meet a lot of great people. And That's it amazing. fuels me to, um, to have that adventure button push. But I think to your point, the other thing that jazzes me is bringing the next generation up. Mm. So I'm working really hard to make sure that I'm constantly replacing myself because it's a lot bigger than myself. Yeah. And I look at this picture, when I said I was undersized, now y'all see what I mean, right? So this is a typical NFL office alignment. About anywhere from 6'6 to 6'9, 300 to 330 pounds. So it, I had to adapt, right? <laughs> So I wasn't the typical size, obviously, as, a, as an average linebacker. So my technique could not be the same. My mindset could not be the same. My approach could not be the same. My strategies could not be the same. I had to be aware of my skills, right? I had to be aware of the things that I had that could not be coached, that could not be taught. I had to be aware of my advantages and also his disadvantages, right? And so as you're thinking about yourself and positioning yourself in your market and separating yourself, what are your advantages? How can you change up your approach? How can you change up those strategies in order to win when it comes to those major challenges? That's what that office alignment represents, is all those challenges that seem like you can't overcome it. I guarantee you, you find that right strategy. If you find that right person, right, sometimes you may not have to take on these things. Maybe it's somebody else that you can get to help you, right? And then that second picture represents the strategy that we use, how we would have a game plan at times, and then we'll come out and we'll get smacked. <laughs> And sometimes we have to come in and make halftime adjustments, right? It wasn't about pointing the blame. It wasn't about focusing on the challenges and whatnot. It was about, at that time, seeking solutions. It was about finding ways to galvanize the truth, getting everybody back on track, hitting that reset button and saying, hey, guys, I know we had some setbacks, but hey, this is what we're going to do. We're going to change things up a little bit. And sometimes our, our coach, our leader, will even give us the trust to make, make the call. Right? He would uh, empower us in that way to let us know, hey, you, you know what you've been coached to do. I want you guys to go out there and get it done. Just make sure that you all are on the same page. So it represents that communication. So having that ability to adapt and change things when it comes to dealing with crisis, when it comes to growing and separating yourself, guys, will help you to better lead to win.